let's measure between ground and neutral Ooh, 48 volts Chinese inverter seem to be the absolute crap hmm or Hi, my name is Roland and on my channel we are doing a lot with solar PV and battery storage, off-grid, on-grid systems and all these kind of things. And today we have to speak about a topic which is overlooked very easily inside the DIY community because it's typically the job of the licensed electricians which will try to do this the best as they can according your code in your country. So what is it about? Uh, it is about to how to bond and ground your inverter equipment so that your output and the loads which you connect to your inverter is safe and correctly done. We are a resort here so we have uh, quite a wide distribution uh, situation here but um, when it comes to the building itself the final uh, situation of inverter and how it is then uh, connected to the uh, building uh, then it will be applicable to every other house or residence if you live in a country with a split phase uh, or three phase where we only use one phase here that is also not different in any way let me quickly show you how in general the electrical system is built up and how the electricity is flowing between source of generation and uh, the user and then I will show you measurements what happens if you do not ground your equipment or if you do not correctly or at all bond your neutral to the ground we have a three phase system here in Thailand three phases so you see only three there is no neutral coming from the high voltage of course this is our 100 kilowatt transformer in case you live in the northern america you will probably only have two here you have two hot wires and the neutral will also be built inside the transformer so the transformer has then four low voltage outputs three phases and one neutral where did you get the neutral now the neutral was built here inside the transformer we have three phases and the midpoint is connected and by bonding the midpoint to the ground which you can see maybe here the neutral is uh, created so now here is four low voltage cables going down you can see it here three of those are going into the meter here and coming out of the meter those are the hot wires the phases and the fourth one this is the neutral you see neutral is again just bonded to ground the outputs from the meter is going here to the low voltage fuses from the transformer and then inside of this big uh, four pole cable going into our main distribution board so this main distribution board is still something special you will not find this at home if you only have a house this is because our property is so big this is just a very basic main distribution where everything comes in from the transformer and then is split it up into four high load high power uh, circuits and behind each of those uh, distribution points is again a smaller distribution where then a few buildings are connected and this i will show you then in a moment but how does this look like here so we have the four big cables coming in so we have three phases and the neutral so the phase is coming into that main breaker and this one is the neutral and connecting to the neutral bar which is then here distributed to several 
uh, high power single face breakers and here you can see that that neutral bar actually is again here's a cable we cannot follow it completely but it is here connected again to the ground bar inside of this main distribution board and that ground bar is here connected again with two bigger cables which will then go here into the trench and here will be a ground a grounding rod again so in case that anything happens with that really big uh, cable there supply cable and something is getting shorted to ground the current can flow still from here over ground to the ground rod of the transformer pole and then the circuit would be again completed inside the transformer and that could maybe cause some of those fuses to pop and here we are coming now somewhat to a situation which you might be familiar from at home so we are now behind one of those high power single phase breakers from the main distribution board and this is now another distribution so from that one phase that one is distributed here to three buildings it would be this building here and then another two and then I have here two breakers which are related to our inverter to our off-grid system so in this box there's nothing else than one hot flag and neutral from the main distribution board which is just passing through to other places and as I said one of these distribution points is this building so this is going back up and coming down here and this is now the main load center from this building and here you can first time see we have ground neutrals and the hot leg uh, inside a box with all these breakers and we also have a RCCB. This is of course then already the place where ground and neutral is bonded. You can see ground and face is coming in here and ground initially and you see neutral is going straight to the ground bus bar here and then from there over the RCCB into the neutral bus bar so here the ground bonding is done so what exactly are now these two breakers these are two pole breakers, one is called grid to inverter and the other one grid direct. Let's see what is behind those breakers. The first breaker which is called grid to inverter is going into the AC in input of this hybrid inverter. So it's very important that the source of power is a distribution box, not a load center right if this would be a breaker here inside behind the RCCB the system could not work it's very important the second breaker grid direct goes to my transfer switch transfer switch grid side is my reserve power so the inverter output AC output here goes on the normal of the transfer switch so whenever the inverter is producing power the transfer switch will take inverter power and bring it to this load center which is uh, related with my off-grid system if the power fails on this side the transfer switch will automatically switch over to grid and get the power again from this distribution box here this comes straight from the main distribution board distributing power to either here where it goes to here or from there going directly to the other side 
and if this fails it switches to this and it goes to here where does the inverter get its grounding from nothing else than from the ground here in this building inverters are never bonded ground to neutral inside the device so you have to make the bonding outside and that is the reason why you have to follow code of your a country in different countries this might be done differently so my inverter gives out ac hot and neutral goes over the transfer switch and brings the hot and neutral here into this box and the neutral bar is here bonded then again to ground so now somebody who have uh, carefully listened and watch this we'll say what happens when the transfer switch is changing to grid power so this box will be supplied by hot and neutral from uh, from the grid straight from the grid but my neutral is already bonded here right so if i now connect grid power to this box here i have two times bonding I have bonding here, I have a bonding here. So is that a problem? And in this case it's not a problem because we are here on the same step of a ladder. Let's say like that, right? The phase and the neutral is coming from this distribution. It goes either here or right here. If I bond it here and here, it's like you just use two wires of bonding because the ground rod from here and there is the same one right this goes outside here and then into the ground rod of the building but also here we have uh, rccb here you can only add a rccb behind your bonding because if you bond behind the rccb that would trip the breaker let me now demonstrate you what will happen if you first do not ground your inverter so this inverter is now not connected to any ground rod it can still run as you see you only need a battery and uh, off-grid inverter will output uh, power that is not an issue and the second thing I had to remove for the test is my neutral to ground bonding on my load center so let's measure look and see what happens if we measure our ac out the ground wire is not connected to inverter let's measure between neutral and uh, hot we have 230 that is set inside the inverter and let's measure now between ground and hot so you can see the value started higher now it's dropping the reason is because ground is not connected we are just equalizing now the hot with the ground terminal uh, just by holding the multimeter there so that's the only thing why we can even read something there but you see we do not see 230 so there's definitely nothing pulling uh, the hot down to the ground if i measure now between ground and neutral what do i see remember we have an open uh, bonding wire there in the load center so those two are not bonded it says zero of course because we have more or less a terminal hanging here in the air so there's nothing to read there so let's connect the grounding wire again and then measure again grounding wire is connected let's measure between ground and hot and you can see interestingly we have 243 volts there hmm, what's going on there now let's measure between ground and neutral Ooh. 48 volts what is going on there 
Oh my goodness. So these Chinese inverters seem to be the absolute crap. Hmm. Or is it not like that? No, it's of course not like that. It, this will happen to you with every inverter you buy. Every off-grid inverter will do the same thing. Why? How is it possible? Look, neutral, it is putting out 230 volts. How can we have? Oh, now it's showing 228. It's going up again. You see? Neutral and ground. Hmm. Very, very strange. But of course, there's a reason for this. And the reason is, if you don't provide ground, the zero level to the inverter, it actually does not know how to put his sine wave. It will output a perfectly nice 230 volt sine wave, but it will be shifted somewhere because it does not have the zero reference. So what I'm going to do now is connect again the ground to neutral bonding wire in my load center. And the bonding is now done. Okay, now we can measure again. Ground neutral is bonded. Ground is provided to the inverter. So let's measure. Neutral to hot, 230. Let's measure ground to hot, 230. And now let's measure ground to neutral, zero. Everything is exactly like it should be. Okay, so I will close the system up here and we have a quick talk of what we have to uh, be careful whenever we connect and use an off-grid or hybrid inverter. Many people, if they buy the um, equipment, they just see the terminals and they just connect the cables and the thing, everything is fine. You know, because just because the inverter does have a grounding terminal does not mean that, it gr that the grounding behind is done. If you, it's actually opposite, the opposite way around. The grounding terminal is there for you to provide grounding to the inverter. The equipment will run perfectly fine. You just need to connect a battery to an off-grid or hybrid inverter and it will output your AC sine wave. The inverter at the end does not care if you grounded it, if you connected all the wires according to your code and if that job is done in a safe way. Why does the inverter company not already bond, let's say, ground and neutral inside the inverter? Well, the reason for that is that there is several different grounding systems in the world so different regions, different countries can have different codes how to do it and the inverter company of course does not want to uh, have anything to do with this it just want to uh, give that job to your local electrician to the operator how the final installation is done is just 100% uh, the responsibility of the operator when it comes to ground neutral bonding, there is a few rules. First rule, when you have two power inputs, one is your grid and one is an inverter, they must be on the same level, the same source behind. If, you, if it's a hybrid inverter with an AC in, that AC in must be essentially the same which is your grid input. And then you split it up with a transfer switch and you go from either from that side or from that side. If you do the bonding two times as I have to do in my system, also very important that the source of the power is from the same level. And the grounding also comes from the same place because then it's just an interconnection. It is exactly the same thing. The second very important rule is you cannot feed in behind the RCCB breaker. 
A safety breaker will always trip immediately if you connect ground to neutral behind it. So the entry point to your load center, wherever you then distribute, if this is now your main load center or if this is just an essential load center where you just use your inverter to normally run those loads there, both entry points must be the primary entry points from grid and from the inverter. You cannot use the grid feeding into the load center and the inverter coming through a sub-circuit somewhere. Right? Because this will immediately trip the RCCB. These are the two main rules. If you have a pure off-grid system, like you have a RV and you have an off-grid inverter there, make your grounding whenever you switch on your system connect a ground rod somewhere outside of your RV and ground the inverter if you use an off-grid inverter just to connect a cable and then work with a tool you have your battery inverter your tool always don't assume that just because you connected a cable to a ground terminal this is also giving you a ground connection. So you really need to physically connect your inverter to the ground. And in case that you really just connect one cable and you work with a tool there, there you can then make a ground bonding between neutral and ground straight at the inverter. You really have a safe tool in your hand when you just do something like this. As you saw in today's video, this is a quite complex uh, topic if you do hybrid or off-grid uh, installation by yourself and you are not sure about how to correctly ground your system and bond your system ground to neutral, then please get your advice from a certified electrician in your uh, place and they will help you out. I hope you found it interesting and that I could uh, clear this situation a little bit up uh, please comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.